Super Smash Bros. Ultimate brings new characters, stages, and everything that was included in the past entries into one package. Thanks to an easily accessible control scheme and so many popular characters to choose from, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is one of the most friendly games to pick up and play while also delivering a deeply competitive experience that rivals some of the best fighting games. The online matchmaking suffers from connectivity issues, but it's hard to play the title without getting sucked in. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate doesn't only uphold the expectations of this franchise, it smashes them. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate combines both competitive and casual play successfully by balancing elements for each. You can pick and choose from more than 60 characters that stretch all across Gamer's Greatest Legacies, based on either popularity or specialized tiers. The accessibility is incredibly leveled thanks to the game's use of its signature damage percentage system and similar input commands across all fighters. The unique design of each character's attacks means that players seeking to get competitive will have to learn and understand the strengths and weaknesses of each character's ability to properly counter, evade, or use your shield. For example, Meta Knight is fast and agile, but most of his moves require recovery animation, and Pichu may be powerful, but takes damage for every electrical attack it does. If you prefer a more traditional stamina-based fighter, you can actually adjust the settings to complement that uh, preferred taste, but what makes Super Smash Bros. so accessible is the lack of that health meter. The percentage meter makes it much more accessible for newcomers, as opposed to the more traditional health meter, which can frustrate a lot of players, especially newcomers, when you see that bar just deplete very quickly against more seasoned players. In addition to every fighter to ever be included in this iconic franchise, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate brings new fighters such as King K. Rool from Donkey Kong, Ridley from Metroid, Inkling Girl and Boy from Split Splatoon, and many more. The amount of care and passion that went into designing these characters with new abilities share the same quality as the core selection. You only start with the original 8 characters from the Nintendo 64, but unlocking each one of these characters is nothing but exciting as you see those flashes of color saying a new challenger approaches. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate does feel faster than previous entries added to the insanity during battle. The developers have also included a radar to help players who have knocked outside the screen, which is helpful during 8 player matches. When two fighters are left or in 1v1 matches, an outstanding freeze frame effect is shown when a fatal hit is landed, making those end game moves that more satisfying. You'll still have the option to customize each map, including individual items, the rate of spawn, CPUs and their difficulty, and so much more. Stage Morph is the new addition that allows you to travel between stages during fights. This newly added feature dynamically allows players to better see all the stages and gives the player another obstacle to prepare for. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate does still offer the classic mode where you fight a series of enemies ending in a boss battle between either Master Hand, Crazy Hand, or one of four unique bosses, but there is another mode that will take up a bulk of your time, the single player campaign called World of Light. Now I have very distant opinions about this. On one hand, I loved it, on the other hand, I hated it, so let me explain why I loved it and why I hated it. First, why did I love it? Well, it's actually a very charming story, it's simple yet engaging. Basically, two gods of light and darkness are warring between each other and have taken most of the Super Smash Bros. roster hostage to fight this war. They've imprisoned them in trophies and now are using them as foot soldiers. The only one to escape is Kirby because, you know, how laboratory. But yeah, Kirby escapes and is set on this wide, expansive mission to rescue everyone and defeat these gods. I don't want to say too much to, you know, not spoil everything, but it's a very engaging and charming story that it doesn't try and become more than it is. It also helps that the over map is incredibly decorated, sharing aspects from Legend of Zelda, Street Fighter, Donkey Kong, and so many other aspects within the video game world. It's also noted that it starts off very strong. You fight these foot soldiers in a series of battles similar to Dragon Ball Fighter Z, with handicaps included to help make the battles more lively. You also unlock a series of characters by freeing them in the same way. You fight them, they get unlocked, and then you can choose between them. So what's the problem with this? Well, the game is padded with so many of these small battles that eventually becomes an infuriating experience. Some are so close together that you will have to fight three or four of them to just walk 10 feet. 
The other problem is that a lot of the roster is locked behind this wall. You only get access to Kirby first, but then you eventually gain access to other characters such as Sonic, Mario, Fox, Falco, but most of the more exotic uh, casts such as Cloud, Bayonetta, Mewtwo. So if you main those characters in previous Super Smash Bros games, well you're going to have to find a new main because they're not until the very end of the game. They the developers have included a level playing field in the way that if you unlock a certain stat for one character, it's shared among everyone. In terms of spirits, which is the other unlockable system, the game has included handicaps such as lava on the floor, strong winds, and other aspects in order to encourage you to collect these spirits. There are also exploration hazards where you have to get a certain spirit in order to repair a road, surf across an ocean, and other things. The spirits also have this rock paper scissor mechanic where you get certain spirits to counteract another spirit, but if you power them up to level 99 you could virtually take on anything. The more supporting spirits are much more helpful in the way that they give special bonuses, but overall it's just another system that you're going to have to grind through because only certain enemies grant you the spirits that you need. But by the time you get to the end, there's this outstanding conclusion that made all the grinding and all the repetitive battles worth it. The reason I'm mentioning this is because modern games tend to cheap out on the final boss battle, the most infamous examples being like Halo 4. But it's clear here the developers not only wanted to create an epic final conclusion, but at the same time make it an experience. You don't just go and fight the boss, it's this incredibly layered system where Every, tre every step you make is just one exciting experience after another. This is something that more developers should do, and I hope that after playing Super Smash Bros, they will take note of this. The last thing that Super Smash Bros Ultimate brings that a lot of people are going to invest a majority of their time to is the online play. Unfortunately, I have no gameplay for the online play because I couldn't even get into a single match. I tried wirelessly, I tried land, and every time I got dropped. It was absolutely ridiculous. I saw people who actually got into matches, got a lot of lag and a lot of other issues. The counter argument to this is that maybe my internet was crap, but I also tried Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, PC, and then Nintendo Network with Splatoon 2, and all of those worked efficiently, so it wasn't my internet. It was specifically Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So this is something that has to be resolved as soon as possible. Despite the online issues, what brings the single player, the competitive play, the menus, everything together is the outstanding soundtrack. There are so many soundtracks in this game, ranging from original works, remixes, and iconic soundtracks from games such as Sonic the Hedgehog, Konami's Metal Gear Solid, there are just so many that the sound development team went above and beyond to ensure that just as important it is to pick your favorite stage and your favorite character, picking your favorite soundtrack is just as important as well. So kudos on that, I'm glad they went above and beyond with the sound design in this game. Super Smash Bros Ultimate provides not only an easily approachable fighting game, but also a deeply competitive experience. The overwhelming selection of fighters, stages, musical scores, and options to choose from gives you ample reasons to keep coming back. The only thing holding it back is the online service which I really hope they try and resolve as soon as possible. Regardless, if you own a Nintendo Switch, you need to play this game. It will likely keep you busy not only throughout the holiday season, but well into 2019.